it's official now. Yeah. It, it said it. It's, it's being recorded. So, so dark, you know. Oh, I know. It's it's scary. It's almost like you now you got to watch what you say because you're like, well, this could be. This has got to be like PG, maybe PG thirteen. Just you know, gonna add some kind of like, uh, you know, some rip after that, like a blast beat. Yeah, so that's good. So Dirk, Dirk will be, you know, Dirk will be uh, teaching me. He's been teaching me drums. So I got a lesson with him next Friday. Uh, so maybe I can learn blast beats before that, and I can throw it on here so we can actually make it sound cool. Um, well, everyone, welcome to Metal DevOps. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Jason Gooley, as you all may know. Uh, but with me, I have Shani Kimmelman, who is an absolute rock star, awesome guitar player. And I could aspire to be just half as good as she is, and I'd be, even then, I'd be so happy, right? Um, but tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me about what you're doing and where you're just doing before. Obviously, we're in the middle, for when you're, everybody's watching this, we're in the middle of this whole COVID-19 lockdown quarantine thing going on in uh, 2020 here. Um, but hoping that that gets lifted soon and everybody stays healthy. But tell me about what you've been doing before that, and we'll just go from there. Uh, so before that, um, I was doing a Michael Jackson One show by Cirque du Soleil. Um, it's in Vegas. Um, I've been doing that since uh, middle of August, se September, kind of, you know. Uh, and uh, I was like, before that, I was in LA. Um, and I've been just gigging around, you know, trying to kind of like find my way in the west coast and uh uh i love it here i've been yeah. here for a couple of years i think yeah two and a half years so where were you at before that uh i was uh, i so i'm originally from israel and uh that's where i grew up and i moved to the states five years ago at first i was two years uh in boston and then uh, that was hard. I mean, it's so cold there, and I'm not not made it for that. Like, uh, no. So you you <laughs> said, uh, uh I'm done with the East Coast. I'm going to the West Coast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, Boston is not for me. So I uh, and I always um, I always wanted to be in LA. So it, it was just like a necessary first stop, kind of like yeah. to get myself going with with a visa. Um, and all kinds of stuff like that. So I was two years there and then I moved to LA. I was two years there, then I moved uh, to Vegas. And um, yeah, so we basically, I, I was doing the the gig. Um, there, were, there were some, uh, you know, like there was a two week dark back in January. Yeah. Uh, and then I switched, um, I'm basically rotating on this uh, job with another guitar player. Uh, her name is Shirin, uh, Shirin Siavashi, and uh, she is a great guitar player. Uh, and um, so we have been rotating with that, and then the whole coronavirus kicked in. Yeah. And that was, yeah. That's, that's now a total I'm just I mean, home playing guitar at home, you know, working on some original music and um, doing some YouTube videos, playing for fun. And uh, once you, uh, I really kind of like at first, especially, you know, before it got like super long and yeah. <laughs> boring, uh, I was happy to take this time to kind of go back to play all the stuff that made me want to play guitar, you know, like yeah. way back. And um, so I started, you know, digging my favorite solos like Marty Friedman and, you know, Betancourt and uh, Van Halen and a bunch of stuff like that. 
uh, and it's fun. And I didn't get to do that while I was doing uh, shows because it's two shows a day yeah, and every day almost. So you kind of, you know, you go back home and you really don't feel like, you know. <laughs> You're like, I think I'm going to switch it up to the harmonica or something. <laughs> <laughs> So so funny because you know when you mentioned you mentioned the Michael Jackson one, which I, I have seen twice, which is absolutely for anybody who's not seen the Michael Jackson one. I know this is a a metal music and technology show, but if you have not seen the Michael Jackson one show at Cirque du Soleil in Las Vegas, and that's Mandalay Bay, right? Yeah. You you are missing out. That is one of the coolest shows I've ever seen, and um, I was fortunate to go a couple times now, and now I'll have to go back when I know that you're actually working when this thing is all gets fixed up and everything, but. Uh, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, you mentioned leaving, uh, moving from Israel and then coming over here to L.A. and or, or Boston and then L.A. and in Vegas. And I was recently, it was about a year ago I was in Israel for the first time. I had gone to Tel Aviv and I spent a week in Tel Aviv and then a week in the old city of Jerusalem. And it was so cool because you get to see all this history and culture and I've got family there. So I got to spend a bunch of time with them and I'm just looking around and it was the coolest thing ever. Right? And you're looking at this wall and you're like, man, this wall is thousands and thousands and thousands of years old or something you know like this is crazy and then on the last day i was out there i was sitting there thinking i was like well what am i going to do today because every day i basically i spent a whole week in tel aviv just wandering around and then another week in the old city wandering around and eating you know falafel sandwiches and doing all this good stuff and having good hummus and i was like what am i gonna do on the last day and literally this ad popped up on twitter so it must have known that i was out there and i'm sure it was probably listening to me and it said Go take a tour of the Dead Sea, you know, and the and the Asada and and all the stuff. I'm like, I'm gonna do it, man. So I I went and I get, went out all the way out to the Dead Sea and I was floating in the Dead Sea doing that whole thing and it was so much fun though. I mean, you you think about seeing things that you've never seen before, especially for me. I, I grew up outside of Chicago here and it's cold too. <laughs> um, but then you 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 go back and look at that and it's just so amazing and and it's just it's crazy to to think that, you know looking at, at the structures and how everything is out there compared to, you know, the Western uh, civilization, all the stuff going on out here, it's a totally different ball game, you know? And I think, you know, you mentioned before it every, everything got really long with this coronavirus, like slowing down and being able to, to take stock of what's going on and spend some time focusing on what re re-energizes you, like going through old music and playing solos and stuff, you know, and it's very similar, right? Travel, I used to travel all over the place to work and then this thing happened and, you know, then I'm home a lot and I'm like, well, you know what, though, that gives me time to finish things that wouldn't have been done, like work on the studio or meet with you and do do cool interviews like this remotely and things like that. So I'm I'm thankful to be here and I'm I'm so thankful that you're on the show with me. And uh, there's there's one thing I wanted to ask you, though, and you had mentioned that um, you had mentioned something about playing different solos and you mentioned Marty Friedman. And obviously you're a big Megadeth fan then. Uh, okay. Who are some of your who are some of your like. Who made you or, or or helped you get started with uh, guitar? Because what made you want to get started with guitar, I should say? Who are your influences? Uh, so my very early influences uh, are Megadeth, Tool, um, Children of Bottom. Oh, wow. Uh, even earlier than that, which is a weird, super awkward story, is a Fear Factor in Opeth. Oh, wow, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and yeah, and um, I I listened, like, once I discovered, like, Children and Megadeth and Tool, I listened to them all the time, and I would kind of, like, sing all the notes of their solos and lines and gibberish, and then, yeah. you know, and and just like sing all the notes and and go like after my parents and ask them to play guitar and it was like that for about a year uh until they finally gave up you know <laughs> and uh and then they started taking lessons for a little while but uh, i i didn't um i didn't have like a teacher that really knew what metal was or could teach yeah. me that so i started with uh learning jazz standards okay. and yeah and just like you know for the first couple of years i think i only listened to all the stuff and i could never play all of that so it was really bummer 
kind of like that for me, right? I mean, I, I'm glad I, I stuck to, into it, though, because now I can. I listen, I listen to you play, and I listen to, obviously, the guys from Megadeth and all these different bands, and, and I'm like, there are some things I can play, uh, but then I, I get lost. You know, one of the things that I, I was never trained, I kind of just started playing by ear and tablature and everything, and uh, over the years, one of the things, now that I have a recording studio and I start doing things like trying to record and, and, and write music, you know, that's where theory really does kick in. Like, I really needed some some theory lessons on how some of this stuff even works or clicks together. And um, I, I don't know. I, I look at I look at how you guys play, and I, I'm like, I don't even know how, how, how I, you know, Dave Mustaine's out there just going crazy. I'm like, how do you, how, how? you know, I just, I don't know. So maybe one day I'll be taking lessons from you, which, um, which will be pretty cool because actually it's a, it's a good segue into some cool stuff that we're working on here. Um, I don't know. You want to tell them what we're, what we've been doing kind of behind the scenes with this whole foundation thing? Um, yes. So, uh, David Elson was, uh, awesome to call me, uh, to join this great thing, uh, which is, uh, giving free music lessons, uh, to um, youth who is out of school because of everything that's going on. So basically now we are waiting for the lessons to start. There has been a lot of promotion around it. And uh, I know the lessons just started uh, a few days ago, I think, maybe this week. Yep. And um, uh, so it's still being, uh, you know, everyone is still getting their um, lesson times and um but, and there was a lot of um promotion around that the osa can you screen uh, can you stream <laughs> yeah. and uh and um i think they had a, a couple other streams uh a few days uh, the week later uh which is amazing you know they are sitting there for 10 hours giving i was on both of them <laughs> so much you know they're uh it shows you that these are like the musicians that you look up to as musicians, but also as people, you know. So that's yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, I mean they got hearts of gold. And, and and going back to what you mentioned, you know, there was a stream that we did called the Oh Say Can You Stream, which, uh, and I heard you say scream because it's actually from <laughs> an, an old line. I think it was like a, I think my Sebastian Bach or some, somebody said, "Oh, say can you scream?" And then that became, "Oh, say can you stream?" was the was the first the telethon that we did, and then we did another one called Makeup Test. So, because right. this whole initiative that we're talking about is something called Schools Out. So, if if anybody out there is familiar with the whole Alice Cooper song Schools Out for Summer, um, we actually reached out to Alice Cooper and he gave us a tip of the hat saying that we could use that name, and he was actually on the live stream, and I was fortunate to be on there with him, and it was super cool. Um, and him and his wife were both on and they were talking about their charities and things that they worked on and, and giving back and, and kind of going back to what you mentioned is that it's amazing that not only as a, as fans, we see these artists who are, you know, larger than life and who, who play the guitar and do all these cool things that we, we love and enjoy this music, you know, but then at the same time, we're like these, these same folks are helping people. They have like huge hearts and they want to give back and they want to help kids who are out of school because of this whole coronavirus thing, you know? And I think that that's just a really cool testament, no pun intended. Uh, it's a really cool testament to uh, what what essentially, you know, kids can look forward to and what we as, as I guess, you're, you're, well, you, <laughs> you as an actual entertainer, I'm just, I'm just me, um, can actually give back. And I think that's so amazing, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, um it's also, you know, it's helping not only their kids, but their parents who has to, you know, yeah. <laughs> we all love our families, but. <laughs> you try not to pull your hair out from being at it's home all day with the kids. Now. <laughs> so you're, you're just giving back to everyone. You're just kind of like sharing your time. Uh, for me, it's also a good experience because um, I did not give lessons uh, in the U.S. So I did teach a lot when I was living in Israel, but uh, in the U.S. I did not yet. And I only focused on performing everywhere I can. Uh, so when when David told me to uh, to join this thing, I was uh, I was excited and I wanted to do it. But, you know, but it first it's also like it's also giving me something. 
because yeah. it's it's a little bit different, you know, like not too different, but I think it might be a tiny bit different. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, even going back to, you know, helping people and, and lessons and things like that, it's like, you know, when I was starting guitar, I was, oh my gosh, I was like 14 years old. <laughs> so I uh, I started guitar and you know and I I'll I'll never forget you know I was like listening to jamming out to Metallica Slayer Megadeth Anthrax all the the big four Pantera and I could never really play any of it you know I was learning I was getting you know starting off I started off with a Fender uh, Stratocaster with this little itty bitty crate amp and it sounded absolutely horrible and the distortion didn't work very well and like every time I'm like how come I can't make it sound like 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 that, you know, like what, what I'm listening to. And large part of it was because I wasn't good at the guitar. The other part of it was because I didn't have the right gear. And then as the years went on and then tablature came out and that was really big, I started learning to play my favorite songs. And I, I'm like, oh, I'm getting pretty good at it. I could do a really good rhythm. And and then I, I mess around a little bit with some solos and stuff like that. But I, I imp- you know, being able to improvise and stuff like that is stuff that I really need to learn. I need to focus more on that. And But I'm getting there. I'm trying, you know. And, uh, and that was the thing. It's like, you know, when David uh, David and Tom and I were talking about this whole thing and, um, you know, they were saying, well, we want to try to find a way to do these remote lessons. And I'm like, well, I work at Cisco. We have WebEx. Let's figure out something there, right? See, so maybe we can do this something. This is with- great. This is so yeah. convenient. I mean. Yeah, I mean, and you're on your phone right now, which is amazing. So just to everybody's watching, um, she needs her phone, but at the same time, I'm on my laptop and then as we're going to be giving lessons and stuff like that, there's, there's like, I'm looking up because I have the the big 55 inch, you know, touch screen WebEx board sitting in front of me. And there's like these units you can get and, and it all ties in together with WebEx. And and I was actually able to work with Cisco to get a grant for the David Elveson Youth Music Foundation. And literally from soup to nuts, it was probably like two and a half weeks, maybe three weeks total from having the idea, talking to Cisco and having a grant completely signed and informed, right? Which is completely amazing because we're talking about the largest networking company in the world and for, for them to do something that quick to help give back is just a testament to the culture of this company, you know? And uh, I mean, I'm happy to see that, uh, you know, not only not only yourself, but other other folks and artists are are kind of taking care of themselves. And, you know, we talked to Kiko the other day and he's out in Finland and, you know, he was playing the guitar and doing stuff. You were on, I think, that same call at the same time. And uh, right. yeah. you're, you're thinking about this. And it's like everybody's spread out all over the place, but we're all kind of in this thing together. And I think that yeah. doing things like this really resonate, you know, not only not only with kids, but like you mentioned, the parents and being able to have, a, a you know, their kids happy, but then also a break from the norm of what or what the new norm is called is sitting at home in a corner. Like, what are you doing, you know? So, so tell me uh, now you're you're living in Las Vegas and now you're you're playing the guitar for my, uh, Michael Jackson one and Cirque du Soleil, and are, you mentioned earlier that you're doing some original music. So what's what's going on with that? Yeah, um, so I have um, I don't know. I've been messing for like a really long time. Uh, I've been mess- messing with like some uh, synths and you know program. Uh, and I've been, you know, recording guitar and kind of like making my uh, my own music. And I released an EP with three tracks. I, uh, yes. I think two uh, two years ago. Yeah. yeah I, I, almost... What is the name of that EP? Uh, it's called Escape Velocity. Okay. And um, so it has three tracks, and it's. Um, I I kind of uh, finished that in LA right after I um, uh, right after I got out of Berkeley, and I did everything at home. I had absolutely no budget, like <laughs> at all. Uh, I I recorded some of the guitars uh, at the Berkeley studios. Uh, nice. and and which was awesome, you know, because it's amazing facilities, you know, they have there, you know, and you get the like you get to work with gear that you would never have access to, uh, yeah. un- unless you have some coins in your pocket, you know, and yeah, yeah. then <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. 
<laughs> and uh, so yeah, so everything I did uh, pretty much like by myself. Uh, my ex boyfriend David Mikhailovich, he um, he mixed it, uh, and he also wrote the drums. He's an amazing drummer, um, super super like metal, you know, but like. <laughs> I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not like, I'm very, um, I'm not biased when I say that because he's already my ex, you know, but he's uh, probably the best drummer uh, I've met in the past few years, you know. That's awesome. Um, so is he still in LA then? No, he is in Europe. Okay. Uh, so he, he mixed it. Uh, and uh, it was mastered by Mo Applebaum, who is a, a mastering engineer in uh, LA. Uh, he mastered some Yes and uh, some Fake No More and some. I mean, the name sounds very familiar. I think I, I, I might have heard of him. Yeah, and he worked with David too, I think, at some point. Uh, oh, that's with why. Something. Yeah, and um, so. I, I kind of uh, because I uh, he's also originally from Israel and I know him oh, nice. funny story so he ended up mastering my EP um, and it was more like this like so now I have a few other uh, like tracks that I'm currently working on but I'm really like taking it easy and I'm doing it for me because right now like you know, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm i pretty much doing that for me. So I have my music so I can like translate what's in my head to, you know, to some kind of like form of media uh, the way I want it. And, um, but I'm not doing it for like, okay, I'm going to start like releasing uh, my music so that I get a lot of fans and then people like to listen to it. It's just like I'm doing that when it's done. I put it out. Um, so when I had three tracks, I put an EP, but I would like to make an album. That'd be uh, awesome. Yeah. Cause I, I've heard you play and, I, and I've, I've, I've seen videos on YouTube and I've seen different things around and, and that it's unbelievable, right? So to me, I'm like an album would be pretty cool. So. I've got to get the EP. I'm surprised I didn't know about the EP. So yeah, I've got to work that. Uh, I got to work into getting that thing and do. I'll do a little. Uh, I'm sure it's on iTunes and all yeah, that good it's stuff. Everywhere, yeah, okay. it's everywhere, and uh, it's kind of like video game, uh, video game music with some metal guitars and some tapping and like, you know, pretty synths in the background with some, you know, jazzy chords that I have. I. I have no idea, like, what what chords there are. That's over. <laughs> or, but hey, I mean, well, so you mentioned video game I music. When I write it, I just uh, write it, and I and I don't really look into. Um, when I was writing that, I was working into a uh, the piano roll. Okay. Yeah. 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 With the trackpad, so I have no keyboard, no nothing. So. Are you serious? <laughs> trackpad. So, oh my so gosh. I have no idea what I wrote, like as far as the notes, you know. I also short sighted, so I don't everything like got glory with all those lines and squares and the piano roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have no idea what notes they are. <laughs> You know, it's so funny because, you know, you, you, you mentioned, I, I mentioned, you know, doing some theory, right, and trying to learn some theory, but you also mentioned going to Berkeley, and I, I don't know what it is, but, like, my Facebook keeps blowing up about Berkeley Online now, so you can attend Berkeley Online and actually get a degree in playing the guitar or piano or music production or, and I don't know why, but for some reason that, like, fascinates me. I mean, I'm like, man, that sounds really, really neat. I got if I could take some night classes just for music, you know, production or, or guitar, I mean, I think it would be pretty awesome, you know, and it just goes to show you like, you know, you, you, you've hear major, major musicians like Dave Mustaine himself says, I'm not a theory guy. He's one of the greatest guitar players I've ever met, you know what I mean? But he's, I'm not a theory person. And it's interesting, like, you know, how people can, you can play, but you don't necessarily need to know what the, what all the notes are and, it's the fifth or the seventh or the diminished and all this other stuff to be able to have an awesome sound that people would enjoy. So, I mean, 
And piano roll is a key example of that, right? <laughs> like, I have no idea. Click, 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 click. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's like kind of a guitar and music theory is kind of two separate things uh, because, um, first of all, I knew music theory before I knew guitar. And so it's kind of weird, you know, it's really weird to, uh, but, but, you know, technically I start like, you know, as far as learning how to play, I started from scratch. Um, and I think like, I know a lot of music theory and if you give me some like, I don't know, jazz tune and tell me like analyze the chords and or or if, or if I listen to something, I can tell you like what are all the chords and all the stuff, but I don't use it. Like it's in the back of my head somewhere, but I don't feel like I'm using it uh, while I'm while I'm creating or while I'm, you know. Right. I think um, at Berkeley, I learned uh, mostly uh, everything that's related to sound engineering. Oh, nice. Okay, that's cool. Because I already tested out of their music courses, like the core music, all the... <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just do all those courses real quick. Hold on. All right, next. Well, I was like, hey, I'm cold. I want to get to LA. Uh, let me, like, test out of two years from this degree and do really the, the other two years really quick. No breaks, you know, no no rest semesters no nothing and just got out of there dude that's awesome though i mean and, and how how was your you, you like berkeley it was, seemed like a pretty good I mean, obviously it's like the premier place to go for music you know it's an amazing place um i'm also very grateful for them uh for everything you know that they gave me uh i learned so much about um recording and producing and uh, a lot of theory be behind like sound um, there, when I was there. Uh, it was a time when I was actually kind of like not very much playing a lot. Sure. Uh, so I was and halfway actually, not halfway, even like a little bit after halfway to my degree, I realized that I fucking hate sitting in the studio for 10 hours recording others. All I think about is when I'm going to get home and play my guitar. And then when I'm getting home, I'm too tired. And and I want to be the one that's being recorded in the studio. I don't want to be the one that's carrying the mic stands and positioning them and <laughs> then going back to check how the drums are sounding and all that space. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and halfway through, like, I realized that, um, yes, I, I'm i going to take a lot from this, like, sound engineering studies, but I'm not going to be a sound engineer. I'm not going to happily clean toilets for six months at some studio just so that someone lets me touch Pro Tools one day. You right. Know? <laughs> yeah. And um, no. it's not, but I, I did finish the... I did finish the degree because I started it and because I needed to finish. Um, and then I uh, and then I focused a lot on guitar. So it really, you know, as soon as I got out of Berkeley when I graduated, because also you get so much homework and yeah. a lot of like very, very busy schedule while you're a student there. Um, as soon as I graduated, I did not leave my house for a month and I <laughs> Play played <it>. guitar <laughs> all day yeah. and I, I until I felt like my chops are kind of like where they were before. Dude, you know? That's so awesome. But there was like there was a rust on my fingers. There was just right. like uh, <laughs> like it was it? like it was yeah. So so I know you play the guitar. You play other instruments too? Uh, no, no. I played saxophone when I was seven uh, okay. for three years, and um, I didn't play any other instrument. Um, yeah. See, see, and that's the thing. It's like I, I play a little drums. I mean, I'm not, I'm not very good at it. But I, I play some drums, 
I'm just starting to learn some piano because I'm trying to I'm trying to put together the theory piece of all this stuff for the guitar. Then I play the guitar. Uh, rhythm, more rhythm than lead, that's for sure. Um, but it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I find that I have I almost have too many hobbies. Like I, I need to like narrow in and focus on the one and just all right, it's gonna be guitar. I need to just keep on focusing on the guitar, but it just doesn't ever seem to work that way. And it, I, so you're a you're a an Ibanez person right yeah. i mean you, you that was it a steve steve vi that i see you play all the time yeah that's my guitar um gorgeous guitar the white one yes yes uh that's my baby uh for the past like i don't know 14 years i think oh, uh, it goes really? everywhere with me and i it's pretty much the only instrument i played um i had so I had my first guitar was a uh, chord G. Okay. Uh, my first ever guitar was a chord G. I had it for a year. Um, and then I got this guitar, the Ibanez gem. Uh, and then I just like played on that one ever since. And um, when I got to Boston, I came across another guitar and I bought it and modded it. It's also an, I an Ibanez. And so now I I have two guitars, but I couldn't like collect a lot of gear once I moved to the U.S. because I was moving so often and, sure. you know, and if it can go on a plane with me and plus two like overweight suitcases, then it's not coming. Sorry. Right. <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I know how that goes. I'm Well, now, I'm, you know, because Kiko's a big uh, Ibanez. He's sponsored and endorsed by Ibanez and. I don't know. Maybe maybe you'll be going down that path here pretty soon. I wish uh, I would uh, like would be like a live goal to get endorsed by Ibanez, and um, um, you know I think you gotta have a lot behind you to you know to get an endorsement. Cause... Also, maybe even a lot in front of you because it seems like you're working on a lot of really really things that you know and and you know. You, my my mom always used to say, <laughs> you are who you associate with, uh, which could be good and bad, I guess, depending on who you associate with. But, you know, when you're when you're doing things like what we're talking about, giving back and playing with some of the biggest rock stars in the world, and and Michael Jackson is not, I mean, he was the king of pop, right? So playing any of the Michael Jackson stuff is, is huge. And then for Cirque du Soleil in Vegas and all these things that you got going on, you know, you never know. You might be, yeah. uh, you might yeah. be closer to it than you think. I wish, so. I wish, but that's something I'm like definitely waiting for and like down to work hard for. Um, I had, I think, um, one or two offers for endorsement by other brands and I was not taking it because I'm like, I'd rather wait, you know, for my like Prince Charming. <laughs> Right, no, I'm with you. So that's <laughs> all I gotta do is just be like, uh, you know, hey, Ibanez, because you know they all came over and offered me blah blah blah. <laughs> so there you go. You use that to your advantage, and then you get your Ibanez endorsement. <laughs> so one last thing before I let you go, because I know you're busy, and and I do appreciate everything you've been been doing, and I know we'll be Thanks getting. Thanks for calling me in. That's so awesome, Teddy. No, this is this is amazing, and and you know one thing that I want to ask was that. Um, you know, we'll be doing these lessons here via WebEx here pretty soon, and you'll be you'll be uh, you'll be giving lessons to a whole bunch of different kids out there. And right. and for everybody who doesn't, you you essentially, if you're if you're a a kid or they call it a kid, a child or children under the age of 18 can sign up at EllisonYouthMusicFoundation.org and get put into the roster for uh, being able to get lessons from your favorite rock star, right? So I mean, how cool is that? Um, and you know. For everybody who's not familiar with that, that website, please check that out. Also, I wanted to see if you had any social media that you wanted to talk about and plug and how would people get a hold of you and if they wanted to follow you or check out your YouTube channel or the, even the Michael Jackson show and all of that. Um, so uh, for my social media, you can search me at chani.kimelman on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, on YouTube, it's Shanibanez. Okay, so. Shanibanez. Oh, that's right. I forgot you told me that. <laughs> that's a perfect segue into that, you know, from the Ibanez conversation. 
Yep. So, <laughs> Shouldn't even ask. <laughs> yeah, so that's like basically connecting my last letter of my name with the first letter of Ivanes. And um, I made it up when I was 15 and could never get rid of it later because you cannot change your username on YouTube, apparently. So yeah, not without starting over, right? So, um, but I'm I'm fine with that. It's okay. So uh, that's hey. YouTube, uh, Shenaivanes, and then um, um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Um, and you can find my EP on all the platforms if you search Escape Velocity, or if you search my name. And that's it. I think like Spotify, iTunes, uh, YouTube. You can. Uh, get it on CD Baby or, um, but it's also available for free streaming. Um, yep. Yeah, so I, I just put it out there. Well, well, Shani Benes. <laughs> Well, you know what? Now there's a bigger reason that they have to endorse you, right? Because I mean, your, your your YouTube channel name, come on, it includes it. So, well, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and, and for everybody out there, uh, we'll we'll put some links in and do all all the stuff to to the album and and all the stuff that we're doing with the David Ellison Youth Music Foundation, and all the other cool stuff we're doing with Cisco here as well. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being on. I would love to have you back after a few lessons. Um, just to see what you think and how everything's are going, and then uh, maybe even sneakily have you give me a couple lessons so I can learn what the heck I'm doing. <laughs> Let's do it. Thank you all so much. I much appreciate it. Take care.